this video we'll be going over the area of compound regions. So by compound regions, all that we mean is that uh, we're going to have to find um, more than one region and uh, find the sum of those two regions to get the total area between two curves. So we'll look at an example. It says find the region between the graphs of the functions f of x equals sine of x and g of x equals cosine of x over the interval 0 to pi. So let's go ahead and graph each of these. Um, we'll graph the sine function first. So we're going between 0 and pi. So sine uh, starts at the origin. Um, and uh, between 0 and pi, the max value of 1 is going to occur at pi over 2. So the sine graph is going to look something like this. Okay, so that is f of x is equal to sine of x. And then for g of x between 0 and pi, well, uh, cosine begins at 1. Um, it's going to have its uh, minimum value at pi over 2, so down to negative 1. And then it'll come back up here. So so there is g of x is equal to cosine of x. Okay, so if we're looking at the areas in between these two curves, we have two different areas. We have this area here, and then we have this area here. So let's call these R1 and uh, R2. Okay, so in order to find the area uh, R1, we need to know what the limits of that uh, integral are going to be. So we know the left bound of that is 0 because we're given the um, interval between 0 and pi. So we're beginning at 0. We need to know what this uh, value is right here, uh, what that x value is. Okay, so um, how we do this is we set, si we set the functions equal to each other. So in other words, when is sine of x equal to cosine of x? Well, that's at pi over 4. Both sine of x and cosine of x have a value of root 2 over 2. Okay, so our first integral is going to be from 0 to pi over 4. For r1, the function that is greater in that interval between 0 and pi over 4 is g of x. So we're going to say cosine of x minus sine of x. Okay, so that's our first integral. The second integral for r2, well, that is going to be from pi over 4 to pi. And in that interval, f of x is greater. So we're going to say sine of x minus cosine of x. Okay, and each of these are going to be uh, dx here. Okay, so those are the two integrals. We evaluate both of those, and then we're going to add those areas together, uh, and that'll give us the solution. So why don't you pause the video, see if you can evaluate each of these integrals, find the sum of uh, both areas, and see what you get as your total. Okay, so R1, we end up with an area of root 2, root two minus 1. For, um, hang on, there's a mistake here. Uh, the R1 is correct, root 2 minus 1. Uh, for R2, I made a small mistake down here. Um, cosine of pi is negative 1, so negative cosine of pi will be positive 1 down here. So this is plus 1. So when we add these two areas together, I have uh, root 2 plus root 2, so that's 2 root 2, and then negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So 2 root 2 is our answer here. Okay, for this next example, we have uh, f of x and g of x. Um, but what we see is that the area in red here, so let's call that r, so this area, what we see is that there's a boundary line right here, okay? So to the left of that boundary line, we have an area between f of x and the x-axis. To the right of that boundary line, we have an area 
between g of x and the x-axis. So what we need to do is we're going to find, uh, we're going to get two different integrals, mm, dx, and then the integral for g of x, dx, and we're just going to add those two together. So we're going to find the integral for the left portion from a to b, and then the right portion, let's say it's from b to c. So we need to find all of these, uh, these limits uh, for the integral. So for f of x, uh, for this left portion, it looks like we're going from 0 to, well, where do these functions intersect? So x squared is equal to 2 minus x. So I have x plus 2, x minus 1. So these functions are going to intersect at x equals negative 2, x equals 1. Well, negative 2 is going to be um, not in this region. So positive 1 is where these intersect. And then this is right here, 2. Okay, so for f of x, we're going to say the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 minus x dx. Okay, so uh, we'll integrate. So this will be x cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. So that's just 1 third plus uh, this will be 2x minus x squared over 2 from 1 to 2. Uh, we end up with 4 minus 2 squared over 2 is 2 minus 2 minus 1 half. I get 1 third plus 2 minus uh, 3 halves. Um, getting a common denominator, what will that be? 6. So this is 3 sixths plus 12 sixths minus uh, 9 sixths. So that's um, uh, made another small computation mistake. This should be 2 sixths. So 2 plus 12 is 14, minus 9 is 5, over 6. Okay, so that's the area here. So for this particular question, um, it wouldn't make sense to do one integral where we did one function minus the other function because there's a point, which was 1, that um, to the left of 1, only... Uh, only one of those functions is present. And then to the right, the other function is present. So if we, we can split this up into two um, really straightforward integrals, and then we just add those. Now, there's another way we can do a question like this, um, and that is uh, instead of using x as our variable of integration, we can use y. So let's look at that same graph. And what we want to do is... Let's, write, let's do this entire integral in terms of y. So the smallest y value of this region is 0. And um, these integrals intersect. Well, we knew that the x value where these intersect was 1. Um, if I plug in 1 into either of these functions, we're going to get a 1 as the y value. So if we integrate from 0 to 1, and this is going to be along the, the y-axis, okay? So if we think about how this is oriented, if we're going from 0 to 1, the greater function is going to be g of x, and the smaller function is f of x. Um, but we probably don't want to use that because um, we're, we're writing everything in terms of y here. So what we need to do is we need to write each of these functions, f of x and g of x, um, y equals x squared. So we want to write these as functions of y. So I'm going to solve each of these functions for x. Okay, so this is, take the square root. So square root of y is equal to um, f of y, or maybe make this a little easier, is equal to x, which is the same as f of y here. Okay, similarly, if I say g of x, well, I'll replace that with y, and then I'm going to solve um, for x. We end up with um, 
x is equal to 2 minus y, which is the same thing as f, uh, let's say g of y, is equal to 2 minus y. Okay, so our two functions, f of y and g of y, so we're going to say g of y minus f of y uh, dy. Okay, so what we've done is instead of integrating with respect to x, which is what we did in the previous example, same situation, but now we're going to integrate with respect to y. Okay, so the smallest value along the y-axis was this 0 here up to positive 1. Okay, and the greater function in that interval is g of x. The smaller function is f of x. So we're going to do g of x, I'm sorry, g of y and f of y. Okay, so let's substitute in. We're going to have 0 to 1 of g of y. Well, that's 2 minus y minus f of y, which was square root of y. And then we're integrating in terms of y, so dy. Okay, so take the integral, evaluate from 0 to 1, and see what you get. Uh, if you do this correctly, you should get 5, 6, which is what we got on the, the previous way that we did this. All right, so doing so, we do indeed end up with 5 over 6. Now, either of these methods are appropriate to use. Now, there may be instances where, um, you know, if we had, if we were dealing with more complex uh, functions, it may, in certain instances, make sense to split up the two, split up the area into two areas um, with two integrals. Sometimes, though, it might might make more sense to keep the in, uh, the sorry keep the area as a single integral, um, and then just go through it like we did in this example. But as we can see, both uh, both methods end up with the same result. Um, so. Uh, as you're working through these types of problems, you'll come to realize when one situation calls for um, splitting up the area, while others will be beneficial to keep it as a single area.